afternoon. I am Dr. Amrita Ekbote, Assistant Professor, Kinesiotherapy and Physical Diagnosis Department in Sanjari Institute College of Physiotherapy. I welcome you all to a Physio TV classroom session on assessment of balance. Before we start, uh, of, um, before we start uh, the assessment of balance, I would like to remind you guys that we had taken uh, another uh, lecture or another session on uh, just an introduction to balance where we had covered uh, the theory part of it, uh, wherein we discussed about the types of balance, the types of balance strategies, as well as the neural control, how uh, balance is influenced by the visual, somatosensory, as well as vestibular system. So, uh, going on to assessment of balance. The assessment of balance is uh, done in two ways. That is, the uh, static balance uh, can, be measure, uh, can be measured or tested and dynamic balance can be measured or tested. Static balance can be tested in uh, sitting and standing as well as dynamic balance in, the, in uh, both of the positions. So, uh, to assess uh, static balance in sitting, uh, we have to ask the subject to just come into the sitting uh, position and uh, maintain the sitting position, which is unsupported for a certain amount of time. Now here we have to take into consideration that uh, the base of support, uh, how, how much is the base of support and uh, how uh, the patient is sitting. Like uh, the patient has to be erect and not slouched because that will uh, increase the relaxating, uh, in relaxating you cannot assess uh, static balance. Then uh, in standing, uh, for assessing static uh, balance in standing, you have to ask the subject to only stand quietly with a normal base of support and maintain this uh, position, which is unsupported standing for a certain amount of time. If the patient is able to, uh, patient or the subject is able to maintain this uh, posture that is unsupported standing for a certain amount of time, then we consider the uh, static balance of that patient uh, in the standing position as good. For dynamic balance in sitting, you can either give perturbations or uh, you can uh, make the patient do reach outs. So uh, reach outs can be given in uh, two ways, that is within the base of support and outside the base of support. So uh, in sitting, uh, if the patient is uh, sitting in a particular position, like 90-90 uh, sitting on a chair or a stool, then um, the base of support will, uh, will comprise of his feet as well as the uh, area of the stool that is covered. Right? So it is a larger base of support. So you can uh, give in this uh, position reach outs, which are going to be first within the base of support that is nearer to the uh, patient's body and out of the base of support wherein the patient has to uh, lean forward and uh, reach up to, a, uh, up to an object. So uh, in both of these uh, cases, you have to uh, check whether the uh, subject is able to maintain that posture or not, as well as if the patient, uh, if the reach out is out of the base of support, you have to also check whether the subject is able to come back to the starting position equally uh, symmetrically or not. So if the patient loses uh, his or her balance during any of the uh, two situations, then the uh, dynamic balance in that position is considered as poor or fair. Uh, same way for standing, the subject is asked to stand in a normal uh, with a normal base of support and here also reach outs can be given in um, like within the base of support or outside the base of support and you have to see whether the patient is or the subject is able to maintain the uh, posture while reaching out as well as coming back to the starting position uh, then for perturbations two types of perturbations can be given uh, one is your low amplitude and the other is your high amplitude perturbation right so, uh, in uh, both of the situations, you have to see whether the patient is able to maintain the balance. Balance, in the sense, is maintain the uh, is able to maintain the uh, posture or the position of the body within the base of support without experiencing any fall. So, uh, there are a few specific tests that are used to assess balance. We'll see each one of it one by one. First is your Romberg's test. So, uh, Romberg's test is uh, used to assess static balance in quiet standing. Okay, so uh, static balance in uh, standing. Here, if uh, the patient, uh, sorry, here the patient is asked to stand with narrow base of support, that is feet together. Okay, there are two situations in which Romberg test is uh, Romberg's uh, sign is tested. That is eyes open and eyes closed. So, in the initial uh, part of the uh, testing. Uh, the patient or the subject is asked to stand with feet together 
first with eyes open okay so here is a video so here as you can see in the video the subject is standing with feet together that is narrow base of support as well as the eyes are open if uh, from the uh, lateral view as you can see there is minimal or no swaying which is present during this uh, part of the test if the patient or the subject experiences increased sway or loses balance while uh, doing this uh, position then the uh, test will stop right there the next part if the patient is able to maintain this position that is standing with feet together and eyes open then uh, for 20 to 30 seconds then we can move on to the next part of the test which is standing with feet together eyes closed so here as you can see in the video the subject is standing with feet together and eyes closed the subject is standing with feet together and eyes closed and from the lateral view as you can see uh, as you can see there is a uh, minimal or no swaying uh, present if in this uh, situation uh, the the subject experiences increased sway or uh, loses balance then it is becomes positive right so if uh, if the subject is not able to maintain a narrow base of support with eyes open the test is uh, positive and uh, also if the uh, patient experiences increased sway or loss of balance during eyes closed then the test is uh, positive as well uh, there is another uh, part of uh, romberg test which is, which, which is uh, called as sharpen romberg sign wherein the patient or the subject is uh, set to uh, is told to stand uh, in a tandem position tandem is a uh, heel to toe uh, position which is a narrower uh, base of support than the uh, feet together position right so in this posture again that is tandem uh, standing the uh, balance is assessed with eyes open and eyes closed and same uh, principles are applied if the uh, sway is increased or the patient or the subject loses the balance then the test becomes positive uh, if the test uh, is positive a positive romberg sign indicates that there is loss of proprioception which is uh, present in uh, sensory ataxia as well as uh, posterior column lesions of the spinal cord uh, also if uh, any uh, cns lesions are present uh, for example in stroke wherein the vestibular or the visual system is affected then also the romberg test might be positive so moving on to the next test which is a uh, test or balance strategies how to uh, how do you check for balance strategies or how do you elicit uh, balance strategies in an individual uh, we have talked about balance strategies uh, before in the last session uh, there are three balance strategies that have been defined first is your ankle strategy then your uh, hip strategy so these uh, two strategies are fixed support strategies and the other is your stepping strategy wherein it is a change of uh, a change in support strategy that is your base of support will uh, change once you step forward right so let's see the video now instruct the patient to look forward the, the patient or the subject is standing with a normal base of support and so if you give a small amplitude perturbation uh, to elicit a balance strategy you need to give a perturbation uh, that is uh, a slight push but uh, it will depend uh, what kind of push or how much push will depend on the uh, amplitude or how much push will depend on the type of strategy that you want to uh, elicit so as you can see uh, once a small amplitude perturbation was given to the subject the uh, subject the uh, the balance strategy that was elicited was an ankle strategy Let's see it again so here uh, in ankle strategy as we uh, know the muscle activation is from distal to proximal right and also uh, it is not just going forward but it is also about uh, whether the uh, whether the subject is able to come back to the starting position while maintaining uh, the posture or not okay so here as you can see the subject was able to maintain the balance 
while um, eliciting the ankle strategy as well as come back to the starting position. Yeah, okay. Now for uh, the therapist or the assessor to be able to elicit uh, a stepping strategy, a large amplitude perturbation is required, so much so that the body has been, uh, the body is displaced out of the base of support. And to maintain the balance, the, there should be, uh, or to maintain the stability, the uh, subject should increase the base of support so that he or she doesn't fall. Okay. So, uh, here, as you saw, a large amplitude perturbation, uh, a large amplitude perturbation elicited a stepping response. Right. So, uh, for a stepping uh, strategy, a large uh, amplitude perturbation is required, as well as you have to make sure that the patient, that the perturbation is so much so that uh, only a stepping response uh, has been elicited and the patient doesn't fall uh, face first, right? You also have to make sure that you have instructed the patient uh, correctly and uh, you have to make sure that the patient knows that you will be there to catch him if he falls. All right. So um, these, uh, the... Uh, this technique or uh, the way you uh, the way in which you are eliciting uh, uh, the balance strategies can also be used to train uh, or retrain the uh, strategies which have been affected during the uh, lesion or because of the uh, neurological condition so in most cases uh, an ankle strategy or uh, a stepping strategy can be retrained in this uh, in this way so moving on to the next uh, test there is your sensory organization test. Uh, sensory organization test, uh, this was um, developed so that uh, to check whether the CNS, that is the central nervous system, is able to uh, integrate uh, all of the sensory systems that are, all of the systems that are involved in, uh, you know, uh, function, smooth functioning of your uh, balance or uh, able to maintain the balance throughout. So as we know, uh, there are three systems that uh, control or uh, uh, affect the balance, which is your visual, uh, vestibular and uh, somatosensory. So in sensory organization tests, there are six conditions wherein your <laughs> six conditions wherein your uh, wherein these systems are uh, in some way or the other altered and um, the postural sway uh, is being measured. So the subject is standing. Uh, with a normal base of support in quiet standing, this uh, test is used to uh, test the static balance in standing position, right, with uh, varied uh, stimuli. So, uh, first condition is your eyes open with a stable surface. Uh, in eyes open with stable surface, all your uh, sensory uh, systems are unaltered. That is your visual, somatosensory, as well as uh, vestibular. Since eyes are open, there is no alteration in the visual stimulus and stable surface. So your somatosensory and vestibular also uh, is being intact or unaltered. In uh, second condition, um, which is your eyes closed with a stable surface. So once uh, the uh, subject is asked to close the eyes, the visual stimulus has been cancelled, but the somatosensory as well as the vestibular is intact or unaltered. In the third uh, condition, uh, there is, uh, which is visual conflict with moving surround. So the uh, surrounding uh, area uh, is being moving and uh, the subject is standing on a stable surface. So here, since it is a moving uh, surrounding, the vision is going to be altered as well as, uh, and your somatosensory and the vestibular system is going to be unaltered because the patient is standing on a stable surface. For fourth condition, which is your eyes open with moving surface, so here, uh, now the uh, surface has uh, surfaces start to move, right? So uh, with eyes open, the vision is going to be unaltered, but with the moving surface, the somatosensory uh, system is going to be altered, right? Whereas vestibular is going to be intact. For condition, uh, for the fifth condition, which is your eyes closed with uh, moving surface, your visual stimulus has been altered because the eyes have been closed. 
and uh, somatosensory has uh, been uh, altered because the uh, surface is moving whereas vestibular system is uh, vestibular condition is intact in condition 6 which is visual conflict with moving surround on moving platform so your visual as well as somatosensory uh, system is altered whereas vestibular is intact so now when uh, if in the patient the visual system is affected for some reason then um, in conditions uh, two, then uh, four, five, and six, right? So in all these conditions, the patient will show increased uh, postural sway. Same for the somatosensory uh, system. If in some way somatosensory system has been affected, then uh, conditions four, five, and six uh, will demonstrate increased postural sway, right? So uh, this test, again, this test is used only to assess static balance. That is here, uh, only the postural sway or increase in the postural sway is going to be measured. All right. So uh, all these tests which I uh, explained right now, these are all subjective. There is no um, scoring according, uh, there is no scoring or interpretation as uh, compared to the other uh, tests, which, is, which are your quantitative measures, right? So uh, there are specific quantitative measures that can be used to assess balance. Uh, let's see all of these uh, measures one by one. First is your functional reach test. So uh, in functional reach test, uh, the patient or the subject is asked to uh, stand with a normal base of support with shoulder inflection up to 90 degrees. So here on the wall, as you can see, there is a measuring uh, tape, which has been uh, stuck, or um, there can be a, a like a scale or a ruler wherein you can measure the distance that is uh, covered. Now, the patient is standing with 90 degree shoulder flexion, as you can see here, and with relaxed uh, uh, this. Now, once the patient has attained this position, uh, the subject has attained this position. You can ask this. Uh, you ask the subject to lean forward, but here the lean is going to be only through the trunk and not through the uh, lower limbs, or the subject cannot step forward, right? So in the second picture, as you can see, uh, with shoulder in ninety degree, with shoulder in ninety degree flexion, the subject is asked to just lean forward. And the uh, distance that is covered while leaning forward minus the distance at the initial uh, testing or initial position, uh, the, uh, the difference is calculated and the uh, number that you get, the, the value that you get is going to be your functional reach test value, right? There is another uh, modification or an... Uh, uh, there is another modification of this test, which is also which is called as multi-directional uh, reach test, wherein here uh, you are only uh, reaching forward, right? In multi-directional reach test, you are going to reach uh, backward as well, like coming uh, not just coming back to the uh, starting position, but going a little more back. That is uh, doing trunk extension, as well as lateral reaches are also being uh, tested, both right and left. So uh, this uh, test assesses uh, dynamic balance in standing. Next test is your Berg balance scale. Uh, Berg balance scale. So uh, this is a standardized uh, measure to uh, assess balance, both static as well as dynamic. There are 14 components. That is, it is a 14 item scale, uh, which was uh, designed to measure balance of the elderly, uh, elderly but uh, it can be used in other uh, neurological conditions as well. So um, some components are uh, where you measure static balance like stand unsupported and sitting unsupported, whereas uh, everything else is for dynamic balance, right? It is scored on a uh, scale, it is scored on a uh, scale of uh, zero to four, wherein zero is the measure of lowest uh, function and uh, four is the uh, measure of highest uh, function. So since it consists of 14 uh, items, the total score or the highest score is going to be 56. And the interpretation is that uh, if the score is between 41 to 56, then there is a low risk of fall. If the uh, score is between 21 to 40, then there is a medium risk of fall. And if it is less than 20, then there is a higher risk of fall. 
the equipments uh, that are required to carry out the scale are very nominal or very standardized which are a uh, ruler these equipments are very easily available in any clinical setting or any uh, yeah any clinical setting so uh, the equipments that are required are ruler two standard chairs then footstool or uh, stepper stopwatch and a 15 feet walkway uh, the time taken for the therapist to administer the scale is approximately 15 to 20 or uh, 15 to 20 minutes um there are specific instructions that are given for each and every uh, component each and every item to be uh, measured the test has to be carried out according to those instructions or uh, it becomes a little uh, difficult to uh, interpret right so moving on to uh, the next scale it is a uh, performance oriented mobility assessment so this uh, scale it was um, this scale was made for the elderly uh, uh, patients or subjects it was specifically designed for geriatric population uh, this test can be taken in any clinical setting but um, with a view to uh, add on with the research for uh, subjects or for geriatric patients who are institutionalized this uh, scale was uh, developed and the scale is mostly used in uh, those uh, subjects so uh, as we all know coma is a performance oriented mobility assessment it consists of two sub uh, sub scales or sub test which is uh, your balance and uh, gait in the balance sub test it assesses both static and dynamic balance in varying positions that is sitting as uh, well as standing and uh, for gait there are various components wherein uh, the gait initiation stride stride length step length as well as symmetry uh, is measured so uh, it takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes for the assessor to administer the scale uh, this scale the equipments that are uh, needed are a chair then a stopwatch and a 15 feet walkway so that a gait is easily uh, assessed and um, since it consists of, of uh, all these uh, this it is it is scored on a some uh, components are scored on a scale of ordinal scale of 2 whereas some components are scored on an ordinal scale of 3 that is 0 1 and 2 right so maximum uh, yeah a uh, maximum score that can be uh, attained is 28 wherein a uh, total balance score is 16 and a uh, total gait score is 12 so maximum score that the uh, subject can have is 28 uh, if the score is between 25 to 28 then the subject has low risk of fall if it is between 19 to 24 then the subject has medium risk of fall and if it is less than 19 then the subject has high risk of fall next test is your uh, timed up and go test so uh, this uh, test can be administered in anyone and everyone it is a very uh, easy and very quick uh, measure to uh, quick test to measure uh, balance while uh, standing uh, or for the transition from sit to stand as well as during walking so uh, to be able to carry out timed up and go test you require a chair a 3 meter uh, walkway and a stopwatch that's it uh the the uh, subject is asked to sit on the chair as you can see here uh and uh, specific instructions are given so uh, before starting the uh, test make sure that the uh, patient is uh, cognitively cognitively okay oriented so that whatever instructions you give to the patient he or she is able to understand it and do the test accordingly uh also the subject should be wearing comfortable clothes the subject should be wearing comfortable shoes and uh, you have to instruct the subject before starting the test that uh, he or she has to walk at a normal pace or a comfortable pace according to uh, his or her convenience a 3 meter walkway is uh, marked on the floor the uh, chair is placed uh, before the starting uh, point right not on it but before right uh, now once the uh, patient is seated comfortably the instructions that you are going to give is uh, ask the patient to stand from the uh, place where he is sitting walk around the uh, walk up to the uh, end point that is this mark at 3 meters 
turn around and come back and uh, uh, come back walking and sit on the chair so uh, the assessor is going to start the watch once you tell the uh, subject to stand up and go okay what instruction are you going to give is stand up and go right and uh, the stop uh, the watch is stopped when the patient comes and sits back on the chair okay so the instructions that you are going to give is stand up and walk around the uh, end point and come back and sit on the chair okay uh, in normal uh, adult the time taken to complete this test or uh, this to, the time taken to come walk uh, around the 3 meter uh, distance is uh, less than 10 seconds if uh, the subject uh, has more than 10 seconds of uh, time then it is considered as um, affected or altered okay in most neurological conditions you will see that the uh, according to age the uh, time increases in a geriatric population uh, the normal value varies a little than the normal uh, adult population okay next is your uh, next scale is activity specific uh, balance confidence scale so uh, this is a self administered uh, scale uh, since that the patient can uh, write or score all these components by himself for every uh, component that there is there are total 16 items on the scale and for every uh, item there is going to be a specific instruction that you have to follow uh, or ask the uh, tell the patient to read the instruction carefully and then uh, mark whatever uh, value he wants to so here um for every item there is going to be a confidence level or a percentage that the patient has to write which is between 0 to 100 higher the percentage or higher the total score that means higher level of function okay the patient can uh, mark uh, according to uh, the way he feels because it is a self administered uh, this so the only interpretation is that if the score is higher that means the uh, patient has better functioning next uh, scale that uh, can be used to assess balance is your dynamic gait index so uh, dynamic gait index was developed to uh, assess balance or postural control during uh, gait uh, there are various uh, components as you can see there are total eight components in uh, dynamic uh, gait index which uh, wherein um, gait is assessed in different conditions so it can be on a level surface it can be on an uneven surface it it, it, it can be over or around the obstacles uh, it can be with uh, horizontal head turns vertical head turns as well as stair climbing so each uh, item is uh, there are, there are specific instructions for uh, each item to be able to administer this uh, scale you need a 10 uh, meter walkway um and uh, a stopwatch that are those are the and uh, cones those are the only uh, equipments that are required uh, it takes uh, not less than uh, 15 minutes to administer this uh, uh, this scale uh, make sure that the instructions that are given in the uh, scale are uh, exactly uh, administered while uh, you are taking the test and uh, it is scored on a ordinal scale of 4 uh, that is 0 2 3 and uh, every uh, like zero uh, in the ordinal scale uh, depicts uh, severe impairment whereas 3 uh, uh, is normal so uh, according to the performance of the subject the score is marked right um, maximum uh, sorry less uh, score a uh, score of uh, 19 or less is considered as abnormal and uh, it is uh, it is related to the uh, risk of fall so if the score is 19 or less that means the adult has uh, or the subject has high risk of fall so um let's uh, take a quick review uh we saw how to assess uh, balance in both static as well as uh, yeah sit, uh, static as well as dynamic situations so uh, in two ways the balance can be assessed that is static and dynamic 
in sitting as well as standing so for sitting uh, static balance make sure that uh, you tell the subject to maintain the posture unsupported for a certain amount of time for dynamic uh, balance uh, you can give reach outs as well as uh, or perturbations uh, there was specific test that we discussed that was romberg's then uh, sensory organization test as well as uh, we learned how to elicit a balance strategy uh, as well as we saw quantitative uh, measures that are used uh, in day to day uh, clinical uh, setting uh, which are easily uh, administered so uh, thank you uh, i would also like to thank uh, dr parag sanjeevi sir and uh, manisha ma'am for the constant guidance and support uh, i would like to thank our uh, beloved principal sir dr apurva shimpi for giving me this opportunity to record a physio tv classroom session and um, our tech team uh, without them this session wouldn't have gone as smoothly as it has uh, as well as i would like to thank all the viewers who make sure or religiously uh, watch all these sessions thank you so much